Well, let's talk about the 14 most underrated jutsus in the entire Naruto series. Obviously, there are some powerful jutsus here and there that people sometimes don't talk too much about and they fly under the radar. Or maybe people do talk about those jutsus, but not in the intensity they should be or even with the respect they should be given to the jutsu because it's actually more powerful than people mostly think. So I'm going to be ranking these jutsus from least to most underrated in the series. Number 14 is going to be Earth Style. Sandwich technique. It is a very strange name, but it sounds a little bit cooler in Japanese. Doton Sando no Jutsu. Now, you could say this Jutsu is simply a very large earth style Jutsu, which it is, but this Jutsu essentially creates two massive mountains that crash and collide, smashing whatever's between them. And those two mountains are just absolutely huge. They are larger than the Ten Tails because Kitsuchi actually uses the Jutsu to contain the Ten Tails when the Ten Tails is going crazy sh shooting those wood style branches that killed Neji he was the guy who stopped Ten Tails from doing so it could probably crush down armies if Kitsushi chose to do so I don't see what mere chunins or even low-level jonins would be able to do against this jutsu let's be real here it's almost like Madara's meteors except that instead of him tossing meteors just creating mountains and crushing you with them so it's kind of crazy and nobody talks about this jutsu I guess it's because the two times it was used like, it didn't kill the target, but how could it kill the Ten Tails of the Geromazo? If Kitsuchi used this jutsu against regular characters, I think people have a different opinion about it. And this is actually the theme for many of these jutsus here. Sometimes they're not used very often, or when they are used, they're used against a very powerful opponent that can counter it. But 99% of the time, these jutsus cannot be countered. Number 13, the Jokey Boy. This is Gengetsu Hazuki's, aka the Mizukage's, most powerful jutsu, his final technique. Essentially a weird clone of himself which is made out of water on the inside and oil on the outside, and it moves extremely fast being able to cut down several opponents by itself, and the more it moves, the hotter it gets. And when it gets to a certain point, the temperature gets so high that the water inside of the Jokey Boy turns into steam and it explodes into this explosion of steam. The explosion itself is pretty powerful, but the most important and OP thing about this ability is that it never ends. It just keeps on exploding because once it goes critical and the steam explodes everywhere, the Jokey Boy reforms itself and continues to attack building up more heat with its speed and exploding again and again and again until every single one of its enemies are destroyed. It took Gara using his father's sand to stop the Jokey Boy. If Gara's dad wasn't in the battlefield before, then Gara wouldn't have been able to stop that thing. And Anoki was pretty much powerless against it too. So, yeah, this ability took two Kage level opponents to take it down, and with a very specific circumstance, the second Mizukage is a powerhouse. He is underestimated in and out of universe, because everyone kind of treats him as a joke because of the way he looks, but he's very powerful, and I wish we got to see his final battle against Mu when he was alive, the battle that killed both of them. This would have been great to see, and I bet he used Jokey Boy back then. <laughs> Number 12, the ephemeral genjutsu. Now, obviously, Itachi is one of the most famous, popular, and overrated characters of the Naruto series by a section of the fandom. However, people usually talk about his mangaku abilities and other stuff that's more flashy and powerful, which makes sense. But the ephemeral genjutsu is something that technically does not have the raw power of something like Tsukiyomi, but it's so freaking useful and OP in its own right. When Naruto and Team Kakashi faced Itachi's body double in the first arc of Naruto Shippuden, the Kazekage rescue arc, Naruto was told time and time again do not look at Itachi's eyes because he can cast a genjutsu on you as easy as you can say date bayo. So Naruto obeyed and therefore he didn't look at Itachi's eyes. However, he was still caught in a genjutsu that was extremely powerful that he wasn't able to break out of by himself even using the ability Jiraiya taught him to specifically break out of genjutsu. And the way Itachi casted the Genjutsu on Naruto without having to make eye contact was by simply pointing his finger at Naruto. 
So, you don't even have to look at Itachi's finger. He just shoots the genjutsu at you, and you either block it, or you resist it, or you break out of it, but it's very difficult to do any of these things when it comes to Itachi casting a genjutsu on you. And if you don't have any teammates or something else to break you out of the genjutsu from outside, then you're pretty much screwed. And this is just a genjutsu Itachi can do very casually. No hand signs required, just point the finger, powerful genjutsu, nothing much to do about it. I mean, if Itachi wanted to, he could have killed Naruto easily in that situation. I mean, obviously he didn't want to, but Chiyo and Sakura were able to break him out from outside. But I have to imagine that you can cast this genjutsu more than once, so like, can Itachi just finger gun people and genjutsu, 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 everybody's under genjutsu in like two seconds, he just points at people and that's it. Or maybe you can only cast it once at a time? That would probably be a good way to balance the jutsu, otherwise it would just be completely broken. Not that it isn't broken the way the jutsu stands right now, there's a reason why it's only used once and Itachi is the only person who knows this jutsu. Itachi, a character that's famously always holding back in fights for one reason or another and doesn't even have that many fights to begin with in the series. So yeah, let's keep the jutsu just to him so nobody else can kind of exploit it. I mean, Sasuke could have definitely learned this jutsu, right? But he just doesn't. <laughs> Number 11, Particle Style. Now, I know this jutsu is extremely powerful and people know this jutsu is extremely powerful, but I would argue that people still underestimate the amount of power Particle Style has. It's a KK Tota, meaning that it uses three different nature transformations combining into one particular style. For Dust Release, the three elements are Earth, Wind, and Fire. And what you do by using Dust Release, or Particles, however you want to call it, is you essentially create a geometric form that disintegrates everything it touches. And I mean it. Nothing that Particle Style ever touched in the series survived. You may argue that Sasuke survived a Particle Style attack, but no, Sasuke wasn't touched by it because Obito saved Sasuke, the guy who can face through stuff, you know, so the Particle Style didn't touch them. I mean, what's the most famous defensive jutsu in the Naruto series? Probably the Susana, right? Remember what Onoki did to Madara's 25 Susanos? When Madara used 25 clones to produce Susanos and fight the 5 Kage, he essentially created a massive particle style cube that destroyed them all in an instant. He one shot all 25 corporeal Susanos. And yeah, obviously that Jutsu spent a lot of his chakra, he needed Tsunade to recharge him constantly for that. But take a look at the power, it completely evaporated the Susanos. Breaking or cracking a Susano is already considered to be a major achievement. Whatever Susano it is, but evaporating 25 of Madara's corporeal Susanos? That's actually pretty insane. The only thing that actually countered Particle Style was Particle Style as well. When Anoki and Mu clashed their Particle Style, they kind of just collided and exploded into that Particle Style explosion, which turned a major part of the battlefield into dust. But nothing else could stop it, really. Now, in terms of raw power and even hacks, this is one of the most powerful jutsus on this list, but it's not ranked as high because people know it's powerful. It's just that people still underestimate its power a bit. Number 10, and this is another of Itachi's jutsus, the Exploding Shadow Clone. Itachi has the ability to detonate a Shadow Clone, which he only uses once when he's fighting against the Leaf Jonans the first time he appears in the series invading the Leaf Village. Now, why he doesn't use that Jutsu anymore? Well, probably because it's too powerful, or maybe not. Maybe it's because Itachi is just fighting against characters that are way too powerful to be affected by that Jutsu after that part of the series. But still, this Jutsu is insane. We don't know exactly how Itachi does that because, as I said, he only uses it once. Maybe you could even argue he could just put a lot of paper bombs in his Shadow Clone clothes and that's how he did it. But probably not, it's a jutsu that you can explode your Shadow Clone with. And imagine how powerful this can be. You can send your clones to fight in Taijutsu against your opponent. And I mean, if your clone is losing the exchange, just freaking explode the clone. 
GG. I mean, maybe not GG, maybe the opponent can tank the attack and the explosion, but still, it's a great distraction at least. Kuro and I survived the Shadow Clone explosion, but they didn't like that when Itachi did so. And Itachi only exploded one Shadow Clone. You can create more than them, especially somebody like Naruto, who's famous for creating like a thousand Shadow Clones. Imagine if he decided to bomb rush you with a thousand clones and explode them all at the same time. He'd be like Dater 2.0. Number nine, Tarune's Nano Bugs. This just was also only seen once. But Tarune, a member of the Aburame clan, can control insects that are invisible to the naked eye. They're so small, they infiltrate your skin and essentially begin to rot your flesh. There's no real way for you to counter them. You have to cut off your arm just like Obito did when he got infected by them. It's pretty much like an Amaterasu, but instead of dark fire, it's living nano insects. And unlike Amaterasu that burns whatever it touches until it's completely singed away, Tarune can control the insects and remove them from the target if he so chooses, just like he removes them from Fu when Fu gets infected by mistake when Obito phases. I mean, Sasuke has the ability to control Materasu, kind of like Toruna can control the insects, but Itachi didn't have that. The only drawback of this jutsu is that you have to touch the target, which sure, is a condition for the jutsu to work, but it's not a terrible condition or anything. There are several jutsu that require you to touch the target anyways. It's just that if Tarune could use that jutsu and his insects could fly and hover around the target without even being seen, because they're so small, so you would need something like the Byakugan or the Sharingan to see them, or be very good at chakra detection. Otherwise, you just wouldn't see the insects flying around you, and then when they land on you, it's too late, you're already infected, and they're going to kill you. That would probably make the character too broken. So it's good that there's a limitation to the power of the jutsu. The insects cannot fly. You have to touch somebody to pass the insects from your body to the target. And you probably have to touch the person's skin too. No, actually not because Obito wears gloves and he touches Taruni with his gloves and he still gets infected by them. So having to touch the target seems to be the only limitation of the jutsu really. And obviously you have to feed the insects with your own chakra when they are in your body just like every Aburami member has to. Number 8, the Uzumaki Adamantine Chains. This jutsu is pretty powerful and people who don't pay attention to it because it's used by Kushina back when she was giving birth to Naruto. Karin also used the jutsu in the war arc, but her chains seemed to be a little weaker. It was the first time she used it anyway, but Kushina was able to restrain the Nine Tails' movements pretty much completely just by wrapping it with those chains. The Nine Tails is the most powerful tail beast. It's no small feat to do so. And the chains are even set to nullify the chakra of whoever is enwrapped by them. So it's a pretty damn good sealing jutsu. Like nullifying the chakra? Ugh. You cannot use a jutsu, for example, while you're wrapped by them? That seems kinda too OP. <laughs> I said this before, but imagine if Naruto learned this jutsu. He's an Uzumaki, after all, and this is a staple Uzumaki jutsu. If the guy had this, chain jutsu and also the exploding shadow clones, he would be unstoppable. Having the power to subdue the Nine Tails, even if it's for an instant, is already pretty insane. And Kushina was able to halt the Nine Tails' movements for a long while, and she was pretty much dying from having the Nine Tails extracted from her. And then obviously she comes back to Naruto's psyche when he's trying to master KCM and also helps Naruto by using the chains there in his consciousness in whatever realm the Nine Tails is when it's inside of Naruto. So yeah, pretty powerful jutsu. People don't really talk about it very much. Number seven. The Human Path. This is probably the scariest Rinnegan Jutsu, and probably the one that flies under the radar the most, because the Rinnegan is obviously famous and popular in the series, most of its Jutsus are pretty damn broken, but this one is kind of special because, first of all, you can touch somebody and read their mind, collecting all the intel you can possibly need from that particular person. This is how Pain finds out Naruto's location when he invades the Leaf Village. And then once you're done collecting your intel, reading the person's mind, you can extract the person's soul out of her body, killing her instantly, just like Pain does to Shizune. It's an insta-kill jutsu, you just have to touch the targets 
and extract the soul. What else can I say? Well, you can come up and say that, oh, Naruto countered it, he was able to pull his soul back into his body, but not really! Sure, Naruto was resisting the human path ability when Nagato used it against him in the war, but he was gonna lose that tug of war that he was fighting against Nagato. His soul was almost completely extracted, and then Itachi comes in and saves both him and Killer B from Nagato. Like, if Itachi didn't show up there, if Itachi didn't break himself out of the Edo Tensei's control by using Kuro Matsukami, Naruto would have died there. Kabuto used Nagato to touch Naruto's belly and began to extract it. So now, yeah, if he touched Naruto's head, he would probably be stunned, just like Shizune was stunned when the Human Path used its ability on her, and then he probably wouldn't even be able to resist at all. So that was kind of a mistake by Kabuto, or maybe Naruto was just that much tougher than Chizune, which is true, and was able to just resist that stunning effect. We just don't know if the stunning effect is caused only when the human path touches the person's head, or just every time you get touched and the human path ability is used on you. But regardless, this just is a perfect intel gathering technique, and also an insta-kill ability. It doesn't get much more powerful than that. Its only limitation seems to be having to touch the target, just like Taruna's insects. But I guess you could argue you have to put in more chakra than just, you know, giving a light touch. So maybe you have to be more forceful when you touch, with chakra imbued in your palm already. Maybe it's not as easy to cast the jutsu as it is to put the insects, for instance. After all, Nagato seemed to do a pretty unique gesture when he used the human path on Naruto in the war arc. But even still, it's an OP ability, even if it's more difficult to land than just touching the target. Number 6. The Body Pathway Derangement Technique, used by Tsunade against Kabuto in the Search for Tsunade arc. Now, this ability flies under everybody's radars because Kabuto counters it pretty well in a kind of in a BS way, let's be real. But the way this ability works, it essentially warps your nervous system, making it send wrong signals to the wrong parts of your body, so when you want to move your arm, for example, or you're going to move your leg, or whatever, you get the point. Your body's not going to respond to your instructions correctly. And yeah, if that's the case, you're pretty much done, right? Tsunade affects your nervous system with a lightning style, you cannot move properly anymore, you're essentially lagging a lot. And then there's no really a way for you to fight against anybody, right? Yeah, the way Kabuto circumvents this jutsu is by memorizing all the wrong pathways and then moving the wrong parts of his body when he wants to move the correct ones, which is just an insane IQ feat that kind of borders the impossible. But there wouldn't be that many people who would be able to do that. Maybe Kabuto's like the only person on the planet who would be able to do so because he knows the body, he is a medical ninja as well, and he is very intelligent, so maybe is the only person capable of countering the jutsu on the planet. Number 5. The Hozuki Hydrification Jutsu. This is the ability Suigetsu and Gengetsu, the second Mizukage, use to essentially become immune to physical damage. They can liquefy their bodies, essentially becoming water and therefore negating physical attacks. Like striking Suigetsu with a sword, with a punch, with an explosion, it just wouldn't work, the guy would turn into water, and he would be fine. One could argue this is Kamui Light. You cannot be damaged so long as you have enough chakra to maintain the jutsu. Though there are some limitations and also weaknesses to this ability. First, it seems to be very weak against lightning style. Sugitsu says that time and time again. When he gets stricken by lightning style abilities, he cannot phase, quote unquote, with his water jutsu, and he gets damaged. He even says, oh, lightning style, ah, it's my weakness, ah. And it seems like if he takes just enough damage, if the attack is powerful enough to say vaporize all the water in his body then he's gonna at least take damage this seems to be what happened when he took the eight tails bijudama to his face he essentially became a blob of weird solid water not ice but just like solid liquid water if that makes any sense and unconscious after the eight tails fight but even if he didn't just tank that as though it was nothing, he still survived a point-blank full-a-tails bijudama. 
because of that jutsu, which is something that almost no character at all in this series would be able to do. Tanking Nabijudama to the face is not something ordinary whatsoever. And yeah, the second Mizukage also had this jutsu, so the guy was just insanely OP. <laughs> the Hozoki clan in general seems to be one of the most powerful clans of the Mist Village. They have this very powerful hydrification Kage Genkai, the water pistol jutsu. I mean, one of their members was a Kage, and two others at least were seven ninja swordsmen, so the guys were pretty powerful. And the hydrification jutsu was the main reason why they were so damn powerful. Number four. Water Prison Shark Dance Technique. This is Kisame massive water bubble that he uses against Killer B, the strongest Jinchuriki at the time, to completely fold him in half. Kisame uses this water style jutsu that covers the entire forest with a bubble of water where he can move freely and drain the chakra of whoever is inside. He can also move the bubble from side to side in case whoever is inside tries to escape it. It's essentially impossible to flee from there. You have to teleport or use a reverse summon or something like that. Otherwise, you're not getting out of there unless Kisame lets you. And what makes this jutsu powerful is that Kisame can fuse himself with Samehara and gain a lot of speed in water. Nobody is faster than Kisame underwater in the Naruto series, especially when he's fused with Samehara. And then he can just attack you from all sides, blitz you inside the bubble of water and drain your chakra in the process. It's a nightmare of a jutsu for you to deal with. I wonder, could someone like Nagato resist this jutsu? Probably, if he's a massive Shinra Tensei like the one that destroyed the leaf village and explode all the water around him. But then, he's gonna get himself a pretty long Shinra Tensei cooldown and Kisame can just use the jutsu again. Maybe if he uses Chibaku Tensei, for instance, that could suck all the water into the planetoid. But this is the type of character that's necessary to just power through this jutsu. And it's also tailor-made to fight against the Churiki and Tail Beasts. Because sure, you may be big and you may have a lot of chakra, but I'm just gonna make this bubble of water around you and I'll let you escape and drain your chakra for myself. People kind of forget this, but Killer B was demolished by Kisame in their fight. If it wasn't for Samehara betraying Kisame in the last second, B would have lost. And Kisame even tried to use that opportunity to infiltrate the Turtle Island. Didn't work out for him in the end, but still, the jutsu is insane. Number 3. Wood Style Advent of a World of Flowering Trees this jutsu is only used once in the manga, but to great effect. And what this jutsu does is simply absolutely broken. Wood style by itself is broken, but this jutsu is different because its effects are different. And it seems even more powerful and hacks than most of the other wood style jutsus. It creates an entire forest of flowering massive trees that release this pollen that renders everything that breathes it unconscious, or maybe even it kills them after some time, we don't know. No. The one time this jutsu is used, it is against the five kage, used by Mater, and the five kage are pretty much taken out of the fight. If it wasn't by Onoki having an epiphany and waking up for no reason, except that the power of his will woke him up, then the five kage would have died there and Mater wasn't even trying. Sure, you may say that you can just hold your breath and then you counter the jutsu, but how long can you hold your breath for? We don't know, ninjas may be able to hold their breaths for a long time, but when you're fighting against someone, it gets more difficult. So the better way to counter the jutsu would be to just get away from it, which is kind of hard because it's a massive forest. So you have to fly up, which is what Gara was trying to do, but then the caster of the jutsu can swoop in and attack you tossing you back to the Poland, which is exactly what Madara did with Susano, and then all the five Kage were inside the Poland. And if the five Kage were having a rough time countering the Jutsu, I don't know who wouldn't. The two users of the Jutsu are Hashirama and Madara, so <laughs> it's gonna be difficult to counter anyways regardless of who's using the jutsu against you. But you obviously need a massive chalk reserve to use the jutsu, this is one of its limitations. Then again, it's not as though Hashirama or even Madara don't have enough chakra to cast the jutsu. I can only imagine how hellish it would have been to face Hashirama back in the Warring States period. Imagine you're a massive army of ninjas that have to fight against the Senjus, and then you just see this forest of trees being created out of nowhere, with flowers that erupt around you and begin to secrete pollen that paralyze you and essentially take out an entire army of enemy shinobi. This jutsu is insane. <laughs> I imagine Hashirama using 
wood clones and wood golems to make sure nobody would escape the Poland forest, and then he can take out armies as easily as Naruto can say dot debayo. Just like Isami's water prison, you'd have to teleport away from the jutsu, or you just have to overpower it with raw strength, kinda like what Onoki does with his particle style destroying the entire forest. And yeah, we've talked about how powerful particle style already is. The reason why Madara didn't die to this jutsu time and time again when he faced against Hashirama back in the Warring States period is probably because he can use his Susana to break the trees away and essentially leave the forest or destroy the forest entirely. We've seen that filler flashback when Madara and Hashirama fight before the villages formed, that Hashirama was using the Jutsu and Madara used his perfect Susana to counter it. So that seemed to be a pretty good way to go about it, but still, it's not everybody that has a perfect Susana to do it in the first place, or Noki's particle style. Number 2, Sage Art, Stormily Slight Fang, aka Intong, Rantong Koga. This is Madara's laser beam Jutsu, he spits a beam of Stormily's light which can cut through anything, and the data book states that it is light speed. So Madara has a light speed attack. Imagine that! This jutsu does not require hand signs, and it obviously requires it to be a Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. This is why Madara could use the jutsu to begin with. But once you use the jutsu, it is pretty damn powerful. You can only aim dodge it, like Naruto did when Madara used it against him, because it's light speed. Like, you cannot react to light speed. You have to aim dodge the jutsu. That's the only way to counter it. And you cannot even block it, because we saw how it dealt against truth-seeking orbs. Truth-seeking orbs being a KK Mora, a jutsu that combines every single nature transformation, basically the most powerful ninjutsu in the verse, and the most powerful shielding jutsu in the verse. Mamadara's light fang cut through it like a hot knife through butter. It sheared Naruto's truth-seeking orb staff in half, something that nothing had done up until that point in the story. It was always a massive undertaking to even crack a truth-seeking orb shield. When they were fighting against Jubito, Naruto's Bijudama combined with Sasuke's Susano arrow enhanced by the curse mark were able to crack Jubito's truth-seeking orb shield. And then Guy was able to break Madara's truth-seeking orb shield, even though that shield was created by just a single truth-seeking orb, which makes it weaker. But Jubidar is obviously way more powerful than Jubito, so it's a powerful feat nonetheless. And yes, Kakashi's Kamui was able to open a hole through Madara's truth-seeking orb shield, but that wasn't brute force breaking through the shield. He was teleporting the shield away with his Kamui. Madara's Light Fang cut through truth-seeking orbs with power alone. So if it could cut through that, it can cut through anything, essentially. <laughs> Especially because it was so effortless. It wasn't like Guy who had to, you know, really push through the shield of Truth Seeking Orbs in order to crack and then break it. No, it just kind of did it, like it was nothing. And this Jutsu is light speed, uh, according to the data books, so... It is pretty damn powerful. Madara only used it once, probably because if he used it more than once, he would have killed, you know the main characters, again, but it's very overlooked because the scene where it's used is pretty fast and it doesn't amount to much because Naruto aim dodges it. Number 1. Daedara C4 Karura. This jutsu is very, very overlooked and it's probably because Daedara's most, you know, flashy and even impressive jutsu is his C0, the final jutsu he uses against Sasuke, but I would argue that C4 Karura is more intimidating, frightening, terrifying, and even more powerful. It creates this massive clouds of invisible nano explosives that infiltrate your body and explode you from within. You essentially get Thanos snapped out of existence. This is by far Dieter's most dangerous jutsu. First, because it's so difficult to counter. Unlike his regular explosives, you can see, and therefore you can raise a barrier, try to dodge, do things like, you know, regular people can in order to avoid Dieter's explosions. You cannot see the nano explosives. And upon seeing the massive data a quote unquote clone that explodes and eventually releases the nano explosives, the first thing you're gonna think when you see the massive data is like, oh, okay, that thing is going to explode and it's gonna be absolutely insanely massive. I have to do something about it. This is exactly what Sasuke thought when he saw the data. He was like, 
like, oh, is that going to explode? That's going to be bad. But then when it quote unquote explodes, releasing the nano explosives, it looks like it was just a failed attempt at an explosion jutsu, which Sasuke also thinks, oh, did it fail? No, it didn't. So we can even bait the enemy into a false sense of security. Oh, okay, the jutsu failed. That's great. I'm um, announcing to you, you're getting, you know, infected by nano explosives that are going to essentially turn you into dust. And that can work with an entire army of enemy shinobi. You have to teleport away before the cloud of nano explosives gets to you, which is difficult because you don't see the cloud coming. So you're like, oh, the explosion failed. I don't have to do anything. I'm good. Or you have to fly above the cloud, which I mean, good luck. You cannot see the cloud. You don't know when the cloud ends. You don't even know there's a cloud coming towards you. Or you have to satisfy some other very specific criteria, which Sasuke did. And this is the only reason why he was able to counter it. First of all, Sasuke could see Chakra, so he could see the cloud of nano explosives getting to him because of the Sharingan. Second, Sasuke was able to deduce because of the fight he was having with the Eater before he used C4 Karura that his clay explosives could be quote unquote diffused by lightning style. So you have to be smart enough to deduce the lightning cell can diffuse Dieter's explosives, which you can only really gather by fighting against Dieter beforehand and being smart enough to figure it out. And you also need to have powerful lightning style in order to counter it. So Sasuke had to essentially Chidori himself and diffuse the nano explosives inside of his body in order not to die to the Jutsu. Other than that, you're taking the L. I've seen some people arguing that, oh, you have to breathe the nano explosives in in order for them to kill you, but that's actually not the case. Holding your breath is not going to help you out there. After all, nano explosives are so small, they can probably enter you through your skin pores. And the most OP thing about this jutsu is that it attacks you from within. And as we learned in Naruto Part 1, when Neji was fighting against Hinata, the Hyugas, they exploit the inside of your body, they attack you from within as well, parts of your body that you cannot defend. You don't have a jutsu that can make your inner organs more durable, for example, so you cannot tank an explosion from within. So theoretically, if Hashirama was in the range of C4 Karura, he would die. If Mara was in the range of C4 Karura, he would die. Unless they were able to come up with some very creative counters. I mean, Hashirama has Sage Mode, maybe if he's using Sage Mode, he would feel the cloud coming towards him, as he can feel Chakra with Sage Mode, and then try to outrun it. Madara has a Mangekyo Sharingan, he can see the cloud as well, so maybe he can try to outrun it. But even still, this is a bad Jutsu for literally anybody in the entire verse to deal with. And nobody really talks about it because everybody just talks about C0. And this jutsu is much more impressive than C0 because it's more subtle and it doesn't require Dieter to die in order for him to perform it. I mean, there's a reason why he created this jutsu to kill Itachi, right? You don't just create a bad jutsu to kill Itachi. It has to be something kind of out of this world. Like the video if you enjoyed it, it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and then hit the notification bell. Watch this other cool narrative video showing up on your screen right now. And thank you so much for watching.